What up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Jam Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. We have a special show where we're going to be talking about special episodes of the Batman the Animated Series that we find, I guess, Brian, the most interesting, the most impactful in terms of his storytelling. Uh, and, And the first one that we would like to talk about is the episode called Heart of Ice. I think this is the first episode that we introduced to Victor Freeze, Brian. Right. I was watching it the other day because you had mentioned it because I had a list and then I just erased it. But I said, let me go watch it again. And you mentioned the Heart of Ice. And that's one of the episodes that I remember most. He says, to feel a warm hand, yes, I would kill for it. And it's like, Man, you ask yourself that question. Would you kill for something like that if you could, especially if it was taken away from you, Brian? So this episode appears in season one. It was written by Paul Dini. Michael Ansara voices Victor Freeze. This episode wound up winning an Emmy for oh, Outstanding wow. Writing, which is one of the reasons I picked it. And the reason it wins an Emmy for writing is because Brian, of Victor you and Freeze. I like good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but to me... Victor Freeze visually is a character that can go very wrong, very oh, easily. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you need to go further saw, than yeah. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah. Right? So five years later, five years after this episode comes out, we get, let's party as we get ready to play <laughs> ice hockey in, you know, in neon colors. Right? So that's how silly Mr. Freeze can get. But in this episode, Freeze is classic to me. He's a villain that you can empathize with. He's a villain that can be terrifying. And he's so well written. He has some of the best, like when you hear what he says, you're like, am I, am I watching an animated 30 minute animated show of a comic book? Or am I legitimately listening to modern Shakespeare? Think of it, Batman, to never again walk upon a summer's day with a hot wind in your face and a warm hand to hold. Oh yes, I'd kill for that. <laughs> That's a comic book villain saying that. But and the way he says it, oh yes. Oh, and Sarah's I voice and Sarah's kill. voice is incredible in this episode. It's incredible. Brian, when Batman is incapacitated for a few seconds, and in the crossfire, one of his henchmen gets caught. Yep. And he freezes his legs. And that part, Brian, of being terrifying, having no empathy for his guy that he got, you know, he got, his legs got frozen because he got careless. And so to leave him, he said, Victor Freeze, leave him. And you see the dude reaching out for him while the door closes and Victor Freeze is looking at him like, whatever, you know, Brian, and also I think it's one of the first episodes where you get to see Batman's intelligence in terms of figuring out things, Mm -hmm. which was dope. He lays it out that it's it's not so difficult to put together if you ask the right questions. What did he steal, right? Right. What are the things that he stole? All these places, all these things that he stole may come from this. If you put them all together, it was... He anticipates the weapon before it's formed. Yes. That's where he knows where he's going to be. And even that detective, it's so great because it happens to the very end while they're fighting. Yeah. Because he says, that shoot you wear, a result of the coolant and Freeze's response, very good, a detective to the lab. <laughs> what an amazing exchange while they're fighting. <laughs> that Batman is still calculating and figure, th- figuring things out. And, you, and you, what you could hear is that Freeze almost has that respect for him. Yeah, yeah. Even, you know, even... And then he says at one point in the beginning, what puts them on opposite sides, Freeze basically says he doesn't want to fight him. Right? He says, it's a personal vendetta. It doesn't concern you. And then Batman yeah. says, it's my concern now. So then he says, since you ally yourself with my enemies, you leave me no choice. Right? This whole thing is making it layered. Yeah. This, is not, this is almost a reluctant villain. And he has a very specific agenda that does not involve destroying the city necessarily. He's after one guy. But in that pursuit, Brian, 
there is perhaps a potential of a, 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 a tremendous amount of collateral damage. And that's what I think Batman is also trying to avoid in a sense. And what Victor Freeze is saying is worth that that price is worth it to him to get that revenge for what happened to Nora. That and that's what to me like that's what makes a great villain, right? And like I hate to invoke this show that's gone totally wrong, but like I watched this episode and I'm like this is what the acolyte should have been. Yeah. Right? This is the 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 guy that the scientist that breaks bad and goes on a revenge mission, but every step of the way you feel for him. Yeah. Especially when you see the video. Oh yeah. How yeah. Ferret's Coldly, mercilessly, coldly, pun intended, like takes out, you know, eliminates his wife. Pulls the plug, yeah. Yeah. So that, Brian, was one of my favorite episodes. Is is one is is the one that I remember most because of the lines and also the ending of that scene. Uh, Batman and Adam scene had a lot of good endings. Yes. There was one, and not to you know, uh, divert too far away, but there was this one episode, Brian, I'm trying to find which one, I don't know if you remember it, where he tells Bruce Wayne, looks to the guy, I think that at first there was some um, tension between them or whatever, and he says to him at the end, could you tell me about my father? You remember that? No, I don't remember that one. Watch it. I forget which episode is that, but he said, would you tell me about my father? And this is expression on his face. And I was like, wow, that was dope. So then freeze it to your point about endings, because this show <clears throat> obviously had to, had to thwart the villains, but preserve them for their yes, return yes, in the future yes. show. So you have freeze talking to the frozen kind of snow globe of mini Nora or whatever it is. And he says, I failed you. I wish there were another way for me to say it, but I cannot. I can only beg your forgiveness and pray you hear me somehow, someplace, someplace where a warm hand waits for mine. That's the last, that's the last line. <laughs> it, like, it just like leaves you with the cliffhanger. You know he's going to be back, but like, you don't hate, I'm sorry, you don't hate you, Victor Freeman. You don't hate him. You don't hate him. You don't hate him. Exactly. And Batman is then just checking up on him. It's, <laughs> it's, it's... <laughs> Brian. This is the type of writing that you say to yourself, what more can they deliver when we get the Cape Crusader, Brian? This is a sort of foundation that is laid that you're saying, damn, now they don't have no restraints. That's why we're covering this. And even, I got to say, we, we've focused on Freeze because this is a Freeze episode for a reason. But, you know, it's also how they tie the little touches. And Bruce Tim directed this episode himself. Um, the chicken soup. It seems like such a humorous little afterthought from our from our good friend Alfred, and yet yeah. Batman obviously utilizes it to neutralize Freeze. And then his line afterwards: "It's the only way you can fight a cold." <laughs> How did you stop? I mean, it's perfect. It's the perfect circularity, right? A little bit of cheeky humor, but sort of this. Sometimes when you're a hero, it's the most unlikely things that save the day. Yeah, yeah. And it shows Batman thinking, right? Thinking outside the box while he's getting beaten up by a superior opponent. I have this one common everyday item that might actually turn the tide. Yeah, yeah. That was an excellent, excellent episode. Uh, do you want to do one more, Brian? Yeah, let's do. You like you love Pretty Poison, the which is our introduction to Pamela Isley and their, this the animated series version of po uh, Poison Ivy. So I went back yes. and watched that one as well, and and had a had a good. I forgot how much Harvey Dent was in that episode until I started watching it. I was like, yeah, and, yeah. Yeah. Uh, there was a line there, Brian, that I remember. This episode shows Poison Ivy to be a little bit crazy. <laughs> you yes. know? A yeah. little bit, uh, how would I say, overdoing it a bit too much in terms of how much she cares about something that really nobody else cares about as much which makes her unique brian um <clears throat> so obviously uh, if you start off this this episode people are getting turned into i guess trees yeah based on some sort of uh chemical formula poison ivy has concocted or whatever and she's trying to eliminate 
the individuals or the people who are fun or who are um i guess uh fundraising for the elimination of of the forests whatever mm -hmm. and bruce wayne is 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 one on the list and he receives as 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 well as the others victims receives an invitation to some sort of fountain of youth spa mm -hmm. and instead of bruce wayne going uh Alfred and and his bothersome friend. <laughs> he takes her, and they go and they enjoy, and they don't know that they're being they've been sort of being prepped for what's to come. So if you watch that episode, and then when Batman is shown what's been done to Alfred, you can see his eyes widen, right? Brian, do you find yourself skipping some of the Joker episodes? A little, because just he's I only because I know it so well, and he's 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 in enough of them to where it's almost like I don't want to say overexposed, but I remember his voice and I've seen the characterization to where I don't. It's still fresher in my mind, yeah. So I kind of enjoy, like I said, reacquainting myself with Poison Ivy and Victor Freeze and remembering how they sounded. I think is actually kind of cooler because I didn't really have that in my mind when I went yeah. back. Yeah. Have you, has your daughter watched the Batman, the animated series? So yeah, we, we, we aren't, I mean, obviously the season's incredibly long. So she's probably watched maybe like the first 10 or 12 episodes. Okay. And she's, we're watching them in the order that Amazon presents them, which I'm not a hundred percent sure is the order in which they were aired. I gotta be honest, but mm -hmm. Um, but it's the order that Amazon has them in because you can actually get season one, the full season one of the animated series for it's just through Prime, um, on, on Prime Video. So she's been watching some of those. My son started watching it with me. I was watching him one night and he's just sitting there, just like he usually, when he's watching his Bluey or whatever, he's jumping around watching. But when he was watching Batman, he was just like watching to see what's being said and, and, yeah. his, that is not Batman is a is is one of those dramatic for me as a kid it was one of those dramatic shows yeah but in cartoon form yeah and uh, I can't wait for August first man to watch all of them Brian <laughs> I still can't believe it yo I don't know how we're gonna do these shows <laughs> it's late at night apparently. <laughs> <laughs> But let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of uh, those episodes of Batman the Animated Series on this special uh, episode of the Nerd Gen Report where we sort of uh, talk about uh, and get to know again what they created back then and what we're leading up to, which is very soon. Watch Batman the Animated Series, man. Don't go into this. Although you pr probably don't have to watch the Batman the Animated Series to watch the Cape Crusader. I would just... Skip around. Go. Cool. I'm having fun yeah. skipping around. You don't have yeah. to. Watch. There's so yeah, many episodes. Yeah. Or watch us and while yeah. we talk about the episodes. And watch and, the episode. Yeah. Yeah. So you can see what we're talking about. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, let us know in the conversation below what you guys think. And we'll see you next time on the Nerd Report. The show goes on! Yeah!